Okay, folks, thanks for tuning in. You are listening to P.P. Simmons Radio in an exclusive report with lead investigator Mike Zullo of the Sheriff Joe Arpaio cold case posse Obama fraud case. And, Mike, uh, thank you for joining us today on P.P. Simmons Radio. You're out in St. Charles, Missouri right now reporting live, correct? That's correct, Carl. All right, and you are at the National Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Convention, and uh, again in St. Charles, right? That, I mean, you're still there, correct? I'm still here. I just got done presenting. It's about 4.30 over here. Okay, you say you just got done presenting, and what you are speaking of, and we've been trying to keep our P.P. Simmons listeners and readers updated on this, uh, you were asked to do some presentations uh, last night particularly, and I think today as well, uh, before this convention of sheriffs and peace officers and elected officials, and I know at least one congressman is there, uh, because that congressman, Steve Stockman out of Texas, was uh, the keynote speaker last night, so of course you you, you were asked to come and present in a public way as much as you could present publicly. You were asked to present the evidence from the cold case posse about the Obama fraudulent document. But then you were also asked to do a breakout session that went an hour or two wherein you were asked to present um, uh, basically all the criminal evidence that Sheriff Joe Arpaio gave you permission to present. And you presented these to credentialed only people. So, So all of that has now kind of come off right i mean you've done all of that correct it's all finished yeah it was a it was a long day it started at eight o'clock uh, in the morning here and it's now four thirty. and i only ended it about 30 minutes ago okay well tell us what so so how many times did you present how many public ones how many private ones and and what's been the overall reaction i know you re- you called and reported to me earlier that there was a lot of shock and uh, you could hear some audible gasps from time to time i mean uh, the the these po- these folks uh, a lot of them have become believers haven't they tell us about how many sessions you did and who you talked to and and you know uh and, and kind of the results of them well the first session we did was for the public and i believe that got live streamed somewhere um what was amazing to me is this was kind of like reliving history people were not aware of this they had no idea that we did this kind of work and when they saw the presentation and they saw the evidence that we were able to present in that uh, public meeting you could literally see the faces of these people just eyes wide open, mouths dropping to the floor, guests in the audience at times. I mean, it was compelling for them. And I had people come up to me, I mean, standing in line, thanking us for the work that we've done, and people saying, literally, they said, you know, I heard about this, I didn't pay any attention to it, and from now on, I am going to pay attention to it. I'm a believer. Right. Well, that's how compelling it was for yeah, them. Yeah, that, that, and that's powerful. And a lot of these people... A lot of them are, some of them are retired, but some of them, of course, are still active in law enforcement. All of them, you know, have have connections because of their involvement in, in uh, constitutional law enforcement positions. And, uh, and it's my understanding, that, don't let me put words in your mouth, but it's my understanding that many of them ha- are now believers and you are getting at least promises of uh, some pretty active support and, and, and from a lot of these uh, sheriffs and people peace officers. Is that correct? Well, that's correct. The second presentation was only to sworn law enforcement and or state uh, representatives and uh, attorneys that agreed on confidentiality. And we did make that presentation. There was a constitutional attorney in the audience. Um, There was about, I would say off the top of my head, uh, 60 some odd people maybe in the room at a given time. Um, And this went on for about an hour, an hour and a half. And they wanted more. Yeah. So we actually extended the time, and it actually extended for about another two hours, and we went through a lot of material. Yeah, and and, and this is powerful, I, I think, Mike, because w- what happens now as we move this forward, and we and we need to reemphasize that this meeting at this National Sheriff's Convention and Peace Officers Convention was just kind of icing on the cake. I mean, you've been working on some other meetings that are coming up and some other uh, big promises that have been made, that, and you've been going full steam ahead on that. That and then about five weeks ago, this is this opportunity has dropped in your 
lap. And unbeknownst to you, uh, one of the people that you and I spoke with at CPAC and on Capitol Hill uh, was Congressman Steve Stockman, and he winds up being the keynote speaker at this event. So now he winds up hearing all of your presentation material, and I understand uh, that he has asked for another meeting with you and that he is deeply concerned about this. Am I correct about all of that so far? You're correct. It looks like there's going to be another uh, trip to Washington in the near future. Um, He is deeply concerned about it, um, and he really does want to have a lengthy, lengthy discussion about this issue. So I'm sure that something's going to happen very, very soon with that. In addition, there were some other things that you had uh, mentioned or alluded to that you and I, you know, we're working on some other avenues. One of those avenues was just pushed, you know, wide open. As a result of this, uh, a key player happened to be here as well. Yeah. And uh, that's going to really, really move things forward for us. Yeah, and I, and Mike, I just can't help but to see the hand of God in this. I mean, this this just seems so providential because, because you could not have arranged to have one of the congressmen that we spoke to wind up being the keynote speaker. You could not have arranged for him to be in the presence of, of, of scores and scores of constitutional law enforcement officers. You could not have arranged to have had a better sit-down meeting with a congressman and constitutional attorneys and, and, and sheriffs and police chiefs. And I mean, you could not have made that happen, but, but I can really see the hand of God in this. And on top of that, the, the, the congressman that was there, Steve Stockman, not too long ago, he was making impeachment threats over Second Amendment issues, so he's on the record as being outspoken against these constitutional travesties that are going on. So, of course, once he saw this presentation, I mean, this probably blew him away. So, so he, I mean, I, I can just see a real uh, changing of events now for you and, and a vindication for you and Sheriff Arpaio and the cold case posse. Do you feel and see some of the same things I think I'm seeing? I do. I do. I, look, I know it was a divine appointment. It's not a doubt in my mind. And when you can get in front of seasoned law enforcement officials, cops, your peers, and you're sitting over there and you're showing them this stuff, and they're looking at you and they're telling you, my God, a fifth grader can see through this. He knows you've accomplished the goal. Oh, yeah. And what's really big about this to me, I I mean, Mike, really, if it goes no further than this, and I know it will, I mean, it's going to go a lot further, but if it didn't go any further than this, you know, I feel so vindicated, and I know you do too, because because for so long the mainstream media has made people like you and I, they've made us out to be, you know, nut jobs and wing nuts and tinfoil wearing hat conspiracy theorists. They've labeled us birthers, and, and, and now you, as you just said, you've sat down in front of your peers, lawmen, sheriffs, police chiefs, constitutional attorneys, congressmen, I mean, constitutional authority people, they've looked at the same evidence you've had, and not one of them challenged the evidence. Every one of them said, oh my gosh, where has this been? And so, you know, there's a huge vindication here, don't you think? I do. And Carl, there was, uh, like I told you earlier, a constitutional attorney that when it was over, she came up to me and she said, I practice in Florida and whatever I can do for you, whatever I can do for you, you just call me. I mean, here's somebody that knows the Constitution, knows the law inside and out, watch this stuff, and walks away with the same conclusion. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so that's huge. And as I said, if it didn't go any further than this, there has been, to, in my mind, a complete vindication of you and Sheriff Arpaio. But I know it will go further because you can't get this many American lawmen together who have, I mean, hundreds of years total together in criminal investigation experience, and then a congressman and and a constitutional attorney looking at evidence that would be presented in a court or in a congressional hearing, for example, and every one of them are saying, this is huge, this is monumental, this is for real. So, So, Mike, I'm telling you, from this point forward, the Obama bots and the mainstream media, regardless of what they think about you and me and Arpaio, regardless of what they wish would happen, from this point forward, the Obama bots and the mainstream media are going to have one heck of a time labeling us as, as just you know right-wing idiots. I mean, you're holding in your hand a 100% verifiable uh, uh, criminal investigation proving that the document, the only identifying document ever proffered by Obama is a fraud. 
fraud. It's a fake. It's a forgery. And and now you've got a myriad of law enforcement investigators, constitutional attorneys, elected officials that have looked at it with you, and they've all said, Mike, uh, Joe Arpaio, Mike Zulo, you're 100 percent dead on. Well, Carl, I don't think there's any stopping us at this point. I mean, you can't make the promises that I made while I was there. And I told every one of these elected sheriffs or every police officer that was there, um, if you want to come alongside with us, you need something else from me, I will fly to your office. Right. I will do whatever it takes to further this, to get it to where we believe it needs to go. Um, you know, I know people have tried to do other venues. We're not going to recreate the wheel. We're going to have to blaze our own path here. And Sheriff Opayo has been saying it from the beginning. He wants this in Congress, and that's where he intends to take it. Absolutely, absolutely. And now that this uh, recall election thing is behind him, he's back in the saddle, guns a-blazing, politically speaking, and uh, and ready to rock and roll on this. So I know he's got a renewed vigor. I know you do now because you've you, – you, Mike, listen, you've been vindicated. I mean, it's, I mean, you've been vindicated. It's it's over with now. People calling you names, uh, it's over with. Now they've got to call, you know, 50, 60, 70 sheriffs and police chiefs and Congress people and elected officials and constitutional attorneys all together in one group. They've got to look at them and say, all of y'all are wrong and we, the Obama bots, we're right. That just makes them look foolish. So, I mean, you have been vindicated. This is huge. Well, in every one of those arguments that got presented by the opposition were thoroughly and soundly defeated in this presentation. And the other amazing thing is some of these cops actually did have good experience in computer graphics. I was amazed. They were telling me things that we didn't even consider. They were picking up some things out of the document for us to check into that we didn't even consider. Yeah. So from our perspective, it was an exchange. It wasn't just me talking. The, the law enforcement meeting went over three hours, and two hours was a, an open exchange of ideas and observations. I mean, it was, it was an incredible time. You couldn't have bought better time. Yeah. So, so it's your belief, with Congressman Steve Stockman's input, with his outrage, with his desire to have another meeting with you, plus the other contact that you made that's going to open a door that you've been trying to open, they're going to open that wide open for you now, which is a huge door. Uh, you really believe there's no stopping it now, that it's a steamroll from here, and uh, very soon we should see some major, major things happening. Is, is that what you believe? I, I do. I really do believe that. And it has nothing to do with filing a complaint like everybody has been yelling about. Look, we're not going that route. and made that clear. We have things that we've been working on, and you're starting to see some of those things come to manifestation. And, and that's what we're going to continue doing. Okay. All right. Well, Mike Zulu, I could talk to you all day long, but we're going to let you go. I know you've got other things to do. Uh, God bless you. Thank you for your time and effort and energy and, and, and sacrifice. I know your family has sacrificed a lot, and there are still sacrifices to be made. I know you're still going to have to put a lot of hours and time. You're going to be doing a lot of traveling. This thing's going to get bigger and bigger before it gets smaller, but that's, that's what you've been living for. I mean, you have uncovered the crime of the century, maybe the crime of the history, history of America, perhaps one of the biggest uh, frauds in the history of the world, and, and you've had to basically sit on your hands and, 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 and wring your hands over it for a couple of years because the mainstream media shut you down. But now you're just going around the mainstream media, and you've played an end around. It's working. It's steamrolling, and you're on your way. And uh, man, we, we just couldn't be any more prouder of you, Mike. God bless you, and, and give our regards to Sheriff Joe and tell him to hang in there. We appreciate him. He's still America's toughest sheriff well thank you carl i really do appreciate it and i appreciate all your help and you just be safe now okay i will god bless you mike zulo folks you've been listening to pp simmons radio mike zulo our guest from the national constitutional sheriff and peace officers convention in st charles missouri and folks you hang on you ain't seen nothing yet this thing is steamrolling ahead you heard it right from the horse's mouth we'll keep you posted on everything that breaks uh in the future and there will be a lot of breaking stuff you're going to hear it probably first right here exclusively on pp simmons radio facebook and youtube and blog spot god bless you